Awesome, awesome. Hi, thanks for joining our webinar today. I am so delighted to welcome one of TechSuit's partners called Onboard. They provide discounts to nonprofit that are members of TechSoup, and I'm so glad that they brought a whole panel to share with you today. Today, we're going to be discussing driving greater effectiveness for board of directors, and board of directors is usually one of the hot topics, so I'm glad that Onboard is here. My name is Aretha Simons. I'm the webinar producer here at TechSoup. This is being recorded, and you'll get the recording within 48 hours. If this is your first time, I just want to share with you how you can engage today. Um, please use the Q&A section. But I know we have a lot of panelists here, so you probably can type in the chat. They'll probably be able to keep up with you and answer your questions. Again, this is being recorded. And if you learned something cool today, why don't you share on social media and just share what TechSoup, hashtag, or at TechSoup. If you need the closed caption, please use the CC button right at the bottom of your screen and we'll be able to turn that on for you. So I'm gonna move out the way and just let Jillian take over. Um, Jillian Walker is a customer success manager at Onboard and she works exclusively with nonprofit customers. She's been supporting nonprofits for more than 12 years through administrative support roles and as a charter board member for young professionals organizations serving as board leader and so much more. There's so much I can tell you about Jillian, but I'm going to let her tell you a lot of that. So Jillian, I'm going to turn it over to you and yeah. thank you for being here. Thank you so much for having me. Um, I'm always thrilled to talk one with clients, um, but also to have clients talk to all of you. So thank you again for joining. Um, it's true, my name is Jillian Walker. So I've been with Onboard for a bit over three years um, and I do work exclusively, exclusively with non-for-profit organizations. So I'm really excited um, to have our panelists join today. These are clients of Onboard. And then obviously to have them tell you about Onboard because I'm a little biased. So I'm sure you're more interested in what they have to say than what I have to say. So um, let's start with my first panelist. Oh, someone's telling me that my that I look backwards. We're gonna go with it. Thanks, Gail. We're gonna go with it for a minute. It looks straight to me. So please everyone forgive me with the technical background issue. So Laura is joining us today. She is president and CEO of Marshall County Economic Development Corporation in Plymouth, Indiana. She has over 17 years of experience in economic development, including 12 in executive leadership. So Laura has used Onboard for six of those years and across three different organizations in roles as staff administrator and board member. Laura's nonprofit approach to transparency and collaboration is more effective with Onboard and has found improved board engagement as well as organizational success. Laura, thanks so much for joining us today. Hey, um, Julie, Thank you for before Laura starts, I hate to interrupt you, but I don't want you to go through the whole webinar. Would you turn your, um, your, your screen Yes, we'll just turn it off. Oh no, it looks good. Just I don't know if you can flip it. Your um, your onboard screen. What do you call it? Zoom? Zoom yeah. image. Yeah. I don't know why it's not working. Is that one better? Yes. Yes. There we go. Awesome. I have multiples in here. You can tell. I'll just go with that one. Okay. So second today is. Sheldon Himmelfarb, and he is so impressive. He is the founder, president, and CEO of Peace Tech Lab. They have been a client of mine as well, a nonprofit organization in Washington, D.C., which uses media, technology, and data to scale and accelerate peacebuilding efforts around the world. He has spent decades working in the peacebuilding field, including as CEO and executive director of Common Ground Productions, a foreign policy advisor to U.S. Senator, a commentator for National Public Radio Sunday Morning Edition. I am a giant fan of that, of that show. And he has also worked directly in conflict zones in Bosnia, Iraq, Angola, Angola Liberia, Macedonia, and Burundi. He has also received the Capital Area Peacemaker Award from American University. Sheldon, thanks so much for lending your voice. So next, we also have Brian Long. Brian is a strategy and planning director for Wells Fargo. In his role, he leads strategy in how the bank grows and deepens relationships of diverse segment consumers and small businesses. He serves on two boards that use Onboard, New Jersey Community Capital, a community development financial institution, and Washington DECA, a student leadership organization. And he is based in sunny Orlando. Brian, thanks so much. 
Of course. Great to be Yay. with you all. Awesome. And so last, in his current role as executive director, Chad Crockover leads an organization whose vision is that all children achieve success. Chad has over 20 years of professional level experience with significant experience in fundraising and business development, or operations, sales, training, and developing team performance. Chad has used Onboard for almost four years and has seen improvements in both engagement and organizational efficiency. Chad, thanks so much. Thanks, Jillian. Yeah, and Chad is also a good client of mine. I enjoy talking to him regularly, so it's always a treat to see his face. So let's set the stage for this panel conversation. So let's talk about, in this conversation, what is the driving force or problem that these guests that use Onboard wanted to address with board management technology? So I talk to clients all day long. And over the past three years, a few pain points that have bubbled to the surface are they want a single source of truth. They want efficient processes. They want better board engagement and now a way to marry hybrid meetings. So taking some of those pain points forward to our guests, I'm going to start with Brian, but what were some of those big pain points that you faced when managing board meetings without board management technology? Yeah, thanks, Jillian. I think sometimes people forget that board members have a day job, right? And so before a meeting, if you receive an email that says that, you know, attachment number four, page three was edited, you should replace it. Those types of things make preparing for a meeting really hard. So, you know, when I think about the pain points, um, a few is version control, right, to allow the organization to swap and update information. And within Onboard, when you make that swap, it doesn't throw off any of the attachments within the board book. It's a pretty cool thing. Um, and then we, in one of my boards, New Jersey Community Capital, yeah. we are doing a lot of voting and confirmation of resolutions. And so the whole... Uh, being able to vote and e-sign things has really helped us because awesome. it allows us to uh, capture everybody's voice uh, through the voting process. And then if people need to follow up, because believe it or not, some people don't always reply the first time you ask them to do something. Imagine that. <laughs> um, it sends the reminders only to the people who didn't do it, right? And so before we were bothering board members, right? And I was getting emails trying to follow up on stuff. So there's been a few tension points that have been yeah. helped with the onboard solution. I love that. And I love that you put that they have day jobs first, which is so important. And I know that on board, that board members don't want to be inundated with email. So thank you so much for sharing that. I want to shift or talk about the shift, um, you know, with using onboard, but just the shift that some of you have been having now that meetings have been virtual for the past two years, we've been in a pandemic, and now they're kind of starting to go more hybrid, so some in-person and some not, but um, what challenges, and Sheldon, I'm going to actually go to you next, so what challenges did you face when you were managing remote board meetings? Thanks, Jillian, and it's, it's really great to be here um, because this platform, honestly, has been a game changer for us, um, and, and I don't know that it's remote versus not remote. Yeah. It's more like nonprofit versus efficient organization. <laughs> <laughs> so I, honestly, I think that um, before, whether you, uh, whether we were emailing attachments, you know, e emailing the pre-reads, whether we were putting them on a Google Drive, where, you know, those pain points that you touched upon, Jillian, absolutely, 100% experienced every one of them. And they roll up to we are feeling more like a somewhat chaotic nonprofit culture yeah. than a button-down organization that our board members want to see. And I really think in that sense, it was a game changer. Yeah. Um, we do have board members in Nigeria to board members in California and everything in between. And it makes... You know, the time zone differences are challenging. The coordination is challenging. And when you have a platform like this, mm -hmm. it kind of shifts, you know, as a CEO, it kind of shifts the burden from me having to explain 
oh, I wasn't able to cater to you. Oh, I wasn't able to cater to you. Oh, I was, you know, all board members have their own different ways of working. This is one platform for everybody. And as long as we are doing our job and putting the material there in time for them, mm -hmm. no excuses, guys, it's there. So, so, you know, in, in many different respects, it's been a real game changer for us. Right. And, and um, I'm, I'm, I can't say enough good things. Oh, thank you so much for saying that. I want to add on to what you were saying, but, and maybe go to Chad. So were there benefits for you switching to virtual meetings and did Onboard help with that transition? Because that was a fast transition for everybody. Sure, sure. Th thanks, Jillian. Um, I think that one of the benefits was allowing for to be more flexible with the board, board member schedules. So, you know, we got more board, mem board members to attend even during that pandemic time because it was very flexible because they could join whether, you know, via Zoom or what have you with the component of Onboard, which again, as already been stated, allows you to be organized. You can plan ahead. It can, you know, it 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 allows for the big feature that we like to use is the is the, the minutes feature because it's it makes the job of whoever the secretary is on your board a lot easier because it's super easy to use. The mm -hmm. and so you know I, I think it just allowed for more accessibility for more of our of our our board. Yeah, that's great. And I will say for that minutes for any organization, but specifically in the nonprofit world, it's sometimes those are smaller boards, smaller staff members, basically. And so having all of that kind of together, um, no matter what you're doing is incredibly helpful. So thank you for that. So we recently at Onboard did a board effectiveness survey. We do it every year. Um, but according to the, re the most recent one that we just did, so 91% of boards using board meeting software are more confident about security. So do you find that Onboard helps you manage your board materials and communications more securely? Um, I'm gonna start actually, Sheldon, with you, if you have some things, because I know that you guys are using a lot of things, again, with board members across the globe. How has that security been for you? Well, just very quickly, uh, yeah. Jillian, it, it was um, very important for us because we, the Peace Tech Lab, actually spun out from the U.S. government uh, eight years ago. So we're kind of an interesting uh, hybrid organization to have the, the USG roots. And so we had different kinds of board members. So we actually did need different levels of uh, propriety, if you will, over the documents. And so, so actually you know, you and your great customer service. And I can't really, the customer service has been sort of key to us. We have problems with it. We needed to really stratify what board members had access to what documentation for what purpose for mm -hmm. downloading, excuse me, downloading or not downloading. Um, and because they had different requirements, some were USG, some were not. Um, and, and we found the flexibility, the exact flexibility that we needed to both manage you know, agility as well as security at the same time. So far, so good. You know, <laughs> uh, that's fantastic. I also want to love the shout out to the customer success teams. Thank you so much for that as well. Um, Chad, you as well have been very big on because you deal with children, right? So board members and children and and that portion. How has managing with onboard helped your security and communications? going sure. forward. Yeah, definitely. You know, I, it's critical. And, you know, today, today's world is, is a, a lot about data security as well. Yeah. And so not having to, not having to worry about sending encrypted emails or password related PDF documents and being able to use the onboard system as a, as a warehouse or a, uh, uh, an area where board members can access the data they need to know for a meeting and also not, be, not being worried about there being some type of, uh, compromise of data that we would have created. So yeah, I agree. It's, it's been, it's been great for us. That's awesome. Laura, I wanted to turn to you. I had a quick question on, because you are so strong with data and security with your organization, right? And so I'm really curious, how has having control over your data and access really in with granular permissions with Onboard helped you? Well, Economic development projects are so sensitive and uh, 
working with large large companies um, and sensitive real estate transactions. Um, the permissions base has been uh, very helpful. Sometimes, since, sometimes information so sensitive, I can't even share it with my full board, yeah. but I can share it with my um, executive committee or uh, finance committee. Uh, and then one of the one of the things I ran up to ran up against was with some of my seasoned board members. They shared email addresses with their spouse. Um, I didn't know that was a thing. Uh, so I would, you know, I used to, when I, you know, in the pre onboard days, send emails out with the board packet or with some announcements. I'd get an, e- an email back from the spouse. So it goes in a doctor's appointment right now, but I'll make sure he sees this email. And I would just cringe. Uh, also, when uh, board members also use their work email addresses. So they don't own those emails that are coming through. Uh, there's an IT guy at their company who can read those emails. Uh, when you're dealing with highly sensitive uh, information, um, you really need to control who sees it. And I, and I don't think people are always thinking about their work emails can be seen by uh, any number of people. I agree. I agree. And and I will say for some of those boards, you know, the permission level has been really great because, you know, each different group can have their own. And again, back to only specific people, you only need to see what you need to see. So thank you so much for sharing that because sensitive information is, I get nightmares about sending things to the wrong people over email. So let's come away from technology or not technology, away from security for just a moment. And I'm curious, um, what have, you know, I'm interested in another stat that we had from this effectiveness survey. And so one of the things it said was that 74% of board management software users have improved effectiveness last year. So I want to hit on some of you, but where are you finding that your board is more effective when using Onboard? And I, Brian, I'm going to kind of go to you first, because obviously with boards, governance is huge, right? And so maybe if you could kind of tap on, and you hit on it a little bit earlier, um, you know, but some of those governance tools, that voting and e-signatures and things, can you dive in a little bit more, maybe on some accomplishments with those? Yeah, so, you know, the team just talked about security and permissions, that's really important, but so is transparency. And so some of the tools that I appreciate within Onboard to be able to see who clicked on the materials ahead of the meeting, right? Mm -hmm. Uh, And how I might engage the team differently, knowing whether people have done the pre-read or not. So that has been a feature that I've uh, really liked. I already mentioned the voting piece, Mm -hmm. but a user can turn on the ability to have the voting results available to the board or not, right? And so I've appreciated that solution because Uh, It allows us to see, are we unanimous in a decision, right? And then that might also allow for greater conversation later. And then one other thing that I really liked is the app. So um, maybe I need more hobbies, but a few weeks ago, I voted on a resolution on the beach in just by clicking in the app. And so I probably need to put my phone down when I'm at the beach. But the idea that I could do that and not have to worry about logging into something has been really valuable. And it's a feature that we've been promoting on the boards that I'm on that use the tool. I love that. I think that our app is beautiful and intuitive. It's incredibly well done. Um, Thank you for highlighting that. (laughs) that. But it does make it so easy, again, in this remote world. um, Nine times out of 10 board members are probably using an app and not just the web. And so we know that Onboard, you know, 70% of it is built for us on the back end to make your lives easier to be really efficient. And then those board members have such an ease of use. I love that. So Sheldon, can you touch on, because I know you guys do a lot of meeting prep, you know, centralizing documents. Can you talk about how, you and you and Peace Tech Lab has has had some success with basically that single place of truth within Onboard. No question, Jillian. The the fact that everybody knows it's there um, and where to go for it, it's it, that has absolutely added a lot of rigor to just entering starting a board meeting. Um, I think you know, listening to Brian talk about some of the specific features. 
I will say, I think that in terms of like upping our game and, and effectiveness, um, one thing I have noticed is that the our ability now with Onboard to attach the specific documentation mm -hmm. to the specific item in the agenda, I think adds a level of, of um, efficiency and productivity that I had, you know, it's only talking to you now, I'm actually thinking through this. Um, I, I don't think I'd seen that before. And they just seem to know what's coming mm -hmm. and are ready at that part of the agenda because the documentation is attached to that specific item. It's a nice feature. And I believe it has actually added to our productivity. That's awesome. Chad, do you have anything that you can add? You know, I, I would say just to add to what Sheldon shared is that yeah. um, that that ability to integrate documents into the agenda is, the, is really the first thing that attracted me to the onboard product and became just a vital part of running the nonprofit. And I run a, I run a small nonprofit. I have a staff of, of only four people. So as those of you know that are listening to this that are also part of smaller nonprofits, that means that all of us are doing a million different things and being able to tag things, put these in, upload different things. I know it's done, ready. I can decide who has access to it prior to the meeting. Um, I can get other people that can add stuff to the meeting. It's allowed me to have better meetings. I mean, our, our, I would say our board meetings are um, significantly better, more efficient, more, there's more engagement because of the fact that it's just more organized. And, and without onboard, it would be, it'd be a mess. I'm just telling you right now, it would be, it would be what you would, it would be either last minute attachments sent by me. Um, it would be, nothing's wrong with Google Docs, but again, not necessarily the best venue for that. So for me, that integration of the meeting agenda, and really, if you, I mean, if you only got on board just for the meeting agenda, it would, it would, it would be, it would be worth it to me. I love that. I mean, I'm sure a lot of people on this call can remember days of being FedEx to book, or at least building a book. I remember a decade of building books, but then those last minute FedEx pages every time. It never fails. Last minute FedEx pages. And so I love that because Onboard does that integration, lets you do those last minute things. And it also makes it where you don't have to do them alone. So thanks so much. I saw a great question. I actually wanted to, I have a couple more questions, but I really liked um, Gail's question in here. And I'm curious, um, what are the top few things that you wish you could get from your boards that you aren't today? So we can see if the panelists are able to help solve that, that common issue. So I want to highlight that for all of our guests listening. Um, think of those questions. And then I want to make sure that we get back to that, you know, when we get to that Q&A section. So please keep putting that information in the chat. I think that's a really great question. So to my guests, you know, how is, I mean, it's a big question, but it's kind of simple. How is Onboard itself helping you improve engagement, right? Um, not just the, the back-end saving efficiency, but how is it really helping you improve um, engagement with your board and finding some of that success? Laura, I'd love to start with you for that question. Well, this is something I've struggled with um, being 12 years uh, being the head of a nonprofit. Yeah. And because uh, I'm not very good Hoosiers by nature, we're humble and we don't brag about ourselves very much. It's very uh, uncomfortable, so I, very uncomfortable. Yeah, very uncomfortable with the <laughs> self-promotion. And, uh, and I, like everyone else, hate getting emails. My inbox is flooded. I've taken advantage of the announcement feature mm. and on board. And so um, I try to at least once a week, and sometimes if it's a spectacular week, it, it can be two or three times, but I use that announcement feature to tell them what's going on, you know, happy Friday, this is what we did this week, and keep them in the, um, keep them in the loop, and so they can see how uh, progress is being made in between board meetings, uh, and what, what's great about that is they get a push notification uh, on their, um, almost all of my board members use the app, so they get it on their phone, hey, Laura sent out an announcement and they can click in and, um, and see what's going on. Um, I, I also have a board chair who doesn't believe any meeting should take more than an hour. So I get one hour a month with my full board. And these are incredibly smart people. Um, and we're able to have these 
strategic conversations because of on board. Gone are the days where you watch the board members read the minutes before you vote on it. And I'm, I guarantee almost everyone in this uh, webinar has experienced that. Those days are gone and, um, and, and, it's, and it's a good thing. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks so much. Brian, I'd actually like to pop to you too. You know, where have you found, you know, some of that improved engagement? Yeah, it, giving them the information they need, right? And so even when you sign on to onboard, that main screen can be personalized with announcements mm -hmm. and updates. And so we've actually been able to use that to be able to highlight a bit of a dashboard, right, yeah. of, of people were reaching, uh, funds raised, that sort of thing that has helped uh, inform the board members. And then that then allows them to bring some of the insights and information into the meeting for greater discussion. So we've had better discussions because of the pre-reads and the information that's available on the site when they click in. I love that. And it's always great to highlight the dash. Every CSM has favorite features. All of us do. Mine happens to be the dashboard. So if ever anyone signs up and you get me, we're going to have a long talk about the dashboard because it's so much real estate. It's so good. Sheldon, I'd love to pop to you. You know, where have you found some of that engagement success with Onboard? Um, you know, Jillian, I think that... Um, Engagement in general yeah. is hugely improved when you move from a situation, as Chad was saying earlier, you, you know, you're, you're using a Google Drive, you know, you got three of your board have a love-hate relationship with Google Drive. Um, they just, every human being has its love-hate relationships with different tech. Right. So when you go, to something and your board knows that it costs you something. Their relationship with that tech is going to kind of be um, homogenized. Like they, they're, are you a board member? Or are you not a board member? Are you on? Are you, on? you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So I do think that the in, engagement in general um, is just improved when they see you have made an investment in board efficiency and communications. And by the way, love listening to Laura, Laura's, um, how she uses the announcement feature, because now I'm going to steal that idea, Laura. I, I, I really, really think I've underutilized that. And it's a way of shouting about stuff you're doing without sounding like you're shouting about stuff you're doing and just keeping in touch with them. Um, I think this is something Jillian, your team has been telling us we're underutilizing it. <laughs> um, but, but really and truly, I think there's, there's a lot of different ways of getting engagement that differs when they know, when your board knows you've invested in a platform yeah. and it's, it's not just another, you know, nonprofit freebie um, uh, workaround. Yeah. Oh, that's such a great point. You have to be invested. Absolutely. So with all that, and thank all of you so much. You're not off the hook yet, but my questions are done and we're going to take some questions from the audience, but we do have a quick survey for all of our guests. So um, before we get to that Q&A section or session, I should say, we'd love to get your feedback on this session and how it was for you. If you could just take a quick moment and fill out the survey is in the chat um, on your screen. Just let us know how you did. It takes a couple seconds um, to incentivize you. Who doesn't love an incentive? Um, we're going to pull from all those names. We're going to do a $25 Amazon gift card at random. So who doesn't love a little, a little extra? So feel free to fill that out. We'd really love your feedback. Um, and we'd love to, to get, that, get that going. So thank you so much. I'm going to give us a second. Even if you want to pop it out and fill that out later, that's totally fine too. I'm going to give it about a sec. Okay, so let's keep going because I know we want to be efficient on our time today as well. So I'm just pulling up. Um, so I'm going to look over here on another screen. I'm pulling up what we've got for Q&A. Um, and then I'm going to pop into the chat and see what we have there as well. Um, but I'm going to pull some questions that are great for the panel. So can either or any of you talk about ways that this product and Brian, you kind of talked on this a bit 
for transparency as well. Can um, the way that this product has helped with transparency and accountability to your stakeholders? Yeah, I think the biggest benefit that we've seen with onboard for stakeholders would be with staff, right? Our relationship with the staff that's putting together the board materials. Um, we've been able to form better connections when we have questions about things, right? Because they have certain permissions and can see certain things around our materials. And so I've really appreciated the ability to be able to collaborate with staff uh, easier through that type of solution. Awesome. I don't wanna cut anybody off if anyone else has something. Just raise your hand. Okay. Um, Laura, this might actually go towards you, but Jennifer in the Carolinas asks, are there any local government boards or commissions um, that use this product and is it suitable for that context? So um, I think you could actually lend your voice the most to that question. I know that there are ways that governmental entities uh, can use this. Uh, for, uh, for us, we do have uh, shareholders and, and um, who are governmental officials. And so um, it does, it, I, I'm not a lawyer and I don't want to give- I don't want to put you on the spot. Product, but it is a little bit of a workaround um, because we're not sending sensitive data or sensitive information via email, but that would be a question for your own uh, yeah. organization's attorney. Perfect. Sorry to put you on the spot for that one. You were my closest. Okay, perfect. Um, okay, what can I pull? Let's see. This is kind of a um, from an anonymous. How easy is it to transition board members off, on and off of the technology when they are on board or, or, leave, or when they are on a board or when they leave a board? Um, the way I'm reading that question, anonymous attendee, um, on and off the technology when they are on or leave the board, um, depending on what you're asking. So it depends on that data, all of that belongs to the board. So not quite sure what we would wanna off ramp for some of those things, but at least for our solution, um, we have the opportunity obviously um, to toggle people on and off, but also we can also remote wipe, which is lovely. Who doesn't, I mean, when we traveled and if you left a phone or a laptop in a car, we can also remote wipe, not your system, just onboard. So we have lots of different opportunities for that as well. So um, Anonymous, if you want to ping in chat or, or um, get with Aretha or let me know later, and I can answer that probably more in depth of what you're looking for. Um, let's see. I know there's a lot in chat, and I want to give us a couple more minutes before I let all of you go. Um, there was a question in here. How have you had or how have you managed multi-generational boards with some legacy members who strongly prefer the classic mailed books versus younger members who are open to learning new tech? This is a great question. Do either any of you wanna take that? Cause that's something that's coming up a lot. We call them seasoned board members. And then of course we have lots of, you know, young members and a lot of young professional, you know, feeder boards as well. How does anyone wanna jump in on that? how you handle that with your organization. You know, Jillian, I have to say, I have actually, I have, oh, I love that phrase, seasoned board members. <laughs> I don't know what, what, what that makes me, but um, it is, I, I was astounded, to be honest with you. I had some, that every single board meeting, we kind of dreaded, how we were going to make sure they had the pre-reads, how we were going to make sure that they were actually able to even, you know, when we all went virtual, mm -hmm. how, how they were going to be able to um, uh, connect because everybody is constantly floating between Teams and Zoom and, and Google Meets and so forth. Um, and I have to admit this was a very smooth transition. There nice. wasn't, there really wasn't pushback among those folks who you would have thought would have had, uh, who were, I will say, they were the Luddites of the board previously. 
Yeah. And they seem to take to this and be grateful for it. So that's just my experience. You know, that's I, awesome. I, it might be different for others. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, Jillian, can I share? So uh, we'll call this board member uh, April. So April would always email us right before the meeting to go, what's the Zoom link again? Right. And so part of it was just getting used to the technology. And so uh, April, um, you know, really took to onboard because everything was there and she could just click into what she needed. Mm -hmm. And then it's also been kind of fun in our first meetings. One of my boards is newer to the onboard solution. Mm -hmm. We actually have kind of a, a five minute onboard, did you know, right? Where we'll mm -hmm. ask a board member, you know, how would I look at my board book? Right. And, and so those types of little activities allow them to teach each other yeah. some of the skills within onboard. So we've used it also as kind of in a little engagement corner, right, to get folks' um, uh, opinions, thoughts, and tips out in the room as early in the meeting as possible. That's awesome. That's awesome. I love the, I love the idea. We always like to say, especially when we do implementation, so we do at onboard, we go, we have a, a journey for between sales and obviously um, to someone like me, there's someone in the middle who lays that foundation for you. But that's one of the first things they say, always put someone who's into technology next to someone who isn't, and then they can scaffold that learning. And it's really, really important. That's awesome. Um, I want to see what else do we have? Okay, so let's see. If an organization were to train, this is Colin, if an organization were to transition to a management platform like Onboard from nothing, um, would there be any advice? That's a great question. And I'm going to give that to any of you because it's true. There are people coming from scratch, right? And I'm biased. I could go on and on on a sales pitch, but I'm sure they're more curious to hear from you. How did that go from going from zero to 60? Yeah, Chad. Yeah, I mean, I would say that in that situation, we dealt with a similar situation here that, um, you know, obviously be, you want to be transparent. You want to share the information with your board members. But we, what we've had success and we've actually revisited this a couple of times is engaging on board and saying, can you help us with this? And what they'll do is they'll do a virtual walkthrough. They'll do in-person walkthroughs. They'll do pretty much anything to help kind of um, set the foundation for the, for, for the product. Because to be honest, I jumped in with zero training, <laughs> maybe even had avoided some of the conversation at first because I was brand new and didn't know what was really going on. And it's extremely intuitive, number one. Um, and you can't break it, number two, which is the, I always tell people, you know, I tell a board member that you can do anything you want to on here. Now, again, I, I manage your, your permissions. So I, I'm sure you can't do anything on here that can hurt anything. But feel free, you know, even during orientation, I walk them through on board virtually. So I do all of our, all of our board member orientations virtually now, even though I don't have to, mainly because I can walk them through my screen of on board and it, it lays that expectation immediately that this is where we participate, whether we're in person or not in person at a board meeting, this is where the information is stored. This is where you go for questions this is where you go for this is kind of where our our um key point is in our, in our organization so that's kind of what i would do i would i would engage on board and say hey here's what i want to do they'll help you with some some key things to do and then be that person that walks these new board members through the through the um platform that's awesome anybody else with their ramping up with onboard going from nothing from not another platform or maybe just from a Google Doc to, to an actual platform. Anybody else? Hey, Laura. Well, my, my perspective is a little unique. I started as a user, um, as a board member for an organization um, after three meetings of using Onboard and already, I mean, it is very intuitive. Within three meetings, I felt comfortable and, and, and an expert. I immediately brought it to my organization and um, I was in a very small rural county. Um, I brought the average age of the room down by 20 years, I think, by uh, my, my participation. So I was dealing with those seasoned board members. 
I, I promise you, um, they can be brought on. If, if they can use Microsoft, um, if they have just the most basic understanding, they, they will figure it out and training will be very quick. Um, and then what I, I transitioned jobs at the end of 2020. And the first thing I did was, uh, was, was sign up for onboard for my new organization. And I told the officers and the board members at our first meeting as we were doing our training on onboard, um, I believe in this product so much that, you know, we, um, so we're, you know, we, we did it. My, my first introductory meeting, I was training them on onboard. Um, and, and I think the best thing I can say, I mean, there are so many reasons why onboard is great. I've been using it for six years now. I've been using it so long that you, at the time, you could only attach one file to an agenda item. And uh, I, I was working with a guy named Trent, and I called him up and I said, hey, I have agenda items where I need more than one item. And I was creating, you know, uh, additional line items just to attach more more uh, documents. He's like, let me pass that on to the, our developers. Now, I don't want to take credit. That, that take the credit. That's more than one spot. But they listened to the feedback and they, and then within six weeks, there was a patch or there was an update. Um, and the updates are not like the updates on your computer. They automatically happen. They're, they're seamless. You don't even know about it. But they're constantly improving the product. And they're listening to feedback, and you know, it, trying to make our lives easier and to make it make it more user friendly. Thank you so much for saying that. We we are really. I'm going to do something very un Midwest. We are very proud of the fact that we consistently listen to our customers, um, and the product that some of even our guests, just like Laura said, the product that they started with is not the product they have now. And so it's consistently updating and it's consistently getting better. Um, and we're very, very proud of that. Um, one other thing I wanted to, families and transitions, you had a great, and I'm just going to comment on this real fast question. How do you deal with pushback from those seasoned board members resisting change um, and on board? And something to, that Laura said kind of triggered for me. Um, I always say on board the app is easier than Facebook. And I know that seasoned board, board members, everyone is looking at grandkids. You're looking at all the things. I promise that the onboard app is easier than Facebook. So if they can do that, they can do this. Absolutely. So, but that's another thing that, you know, as a CSM with this organization, the fun is brainstorming. The fun is saying, what is a pain point? I think Chad and I have done it before and we've talked about the dash. What is a pain point? And what can we do to make it fit? And again, we understand that the dollar is valuable. And so we want to stretch that dollar for you as well. And how can we, how can we fit something that seems like it just goes in this hole? How can we make it do all these other things that are right for you? So that is something we're very proud of. We listen and we really want to make it better. And we really want you to find success. So with that, I'm at time. I want to thank everyone again. I want to thank all my panelists. Thank you for taking time out of your day for joining. I'm incredibly grateful. Onboard is incredibly grateful um, for your time for doing that today. I also want to ask all of our guests one more time, if you haven't already, to just, and I'm going to, I'm going to see if I can cut and paste it, if I've got the skill, um, that if you could just take the time to do that survey for us, right? Um, I'm going to leave, I'm going to see if I can find it. I might have Damien do it. Just pop that survey in one more time into chat and see if we can just make sure that everyone takes the time to fill that out. And again, I would be incredibly grateful for your time. So with that, Aretha, I don't know if you want to say anything else to your TechSoup guests, um, but here at Onboard, we're very grateful for your time. We're grateful for the opportunity to share about Onboard, and we look forward to hopefully serving some of you in the near future. That was amazing. I learned so Yay. Much. That was so awesome. Thank you to everybody, Chad, Brian, Laura, Sheldon, and Julian. What a great host. Would you guys come back? I mean, all of you. I want all of you to come back. <laughs> Only if we can come to Orlando to do it. Yeah. Oh, for sure. Brian, we got him, right? <laughs> All right. Thank you, everybody. Thank you for watching. Um, please fill out the survey. Also fill out the TechSoup survey. Let us know what other topics you want on board to talk about. And we'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Bye, everyone.